Thank you very much, Belinda. Um, and for those who may not know, um, a lot of what we're doing today sort of is riding on Belinda's back. So it's a lot of work, a lot of multitasking. Thank you. Right, um, so we just heard from Onwuka Glory. Um, just to give a bit of context to those who may have sort of missed a bit about why she was sharing what she was sharing. Um, <clears throat> earlier on, I talked about the big hypothetical piece. So if you think of the uh, Movement Charter Drafting Committee currently as our House of Assembly, um, the, the Drafting Committee is currently putting together sort of documenting our social contract that says, here's how we're going to work together. Here are the rules that we want to work through. Um, here's how we're going to guide our movement. Um, and Onwuka's work is engaging with her language community, the Igbo community, to talk them through the draft of the charter as it currently stands um, and get everyone involved because everybody's voice needs to be represented in the final. So um, as it is, it's her, her way of being the representative for the Igbo community um, to ensure that their voices are reflected in the final draft of the Movement Charter. Once again, I'm Yop Ruang Pam, um, and as the Senior Movement Strategy Specialist, part of my role, again, for those who are not here earlier, is to support uh, by ensuring that we have access to the tools and the resources we need to implement our movement strategy projects. Now, earlier on, we sort of huddled into groups and discussed our movement strategy projects. For some, it was a bit difficult. Now, what is a movement strategy project? Um, what is this big picture that I need to fit my project onto? Or does the big picture fit into my project? In tangible terms, what is a movement strategy? What is a movement strategy project? And so we'll hear from a few people today who have um, been resourced to implement movement strategy projects in their own communities in small ways and big ways. Um, so the financial resourcing for movement strategy comes from the movement strategy implementation grants. I'm the program officer for those grants. Um, and it typically, typically with movement strategy grants, um, we support projects that take on an experimental lens more often than not, or uh, uh, an exploratory lens, or a consultation lens, or sometimes a research lens. But sometimes before we engage with our communities, we want to know for sure or document what we know. Um, often we engage so much and we take for granted, even as Wikimedians, that we know um, and we want to take action based on what we know and based on what we have experienced. Well, that is good. Sometimes we don't have it documented so that there's a concrete reason for why we're taking certain steps. Movement strategy grants support those types of in initiatives. And other, in other times, we know we have a big community that has a lot of different needs. Um, there are tools and resources people need, but what, what are those? And can we have a documentation of that? Movement strategy grants support that as well. So if you need to know what people need from you as a leader in your community, or if people are just asking questions and it seems like the conversations are random and incoherent sometimes, and you just want people to just please give me some clarity and you want to help coordinate your community, movement strategy grants support that as well. Sometimes it's an idea, something is documented but there are little ways that we can test that. Um, there are little ways that we can test a recommendation for something new that probably has never been done in the movement. Movement strategy grants support that, uh, those types of projects and initiatives as well. But support goes beyond funding, as uh, some might know, because <clears throat> when we talk about resourcing for projects, sometimes it's not financial, other times it's just having a good strategic conversation and dialogue with someone who can pinpoint and say, here's how you can strengthen your plan. Here's how you can grow your project. Oh, here's how you can really think outside of the box. Or perhaps on your project, you need to develop a learning plan, but you're not the learning specialist. Um, on movement strategy, we can support you with that. There are um, 
a lot of colleagues at the foundation who do have that skill and that expertise. Um, and with the right conversations, we can ensure that you have um, that learning plan or the learning framework that you need to implement your project. At other times, it's also just about figuring out what research um, it currently exists. What's the data that currently exists? So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, yes, you want to document things, but perhaps something already has been documented. Um, so there's that. There are a few really big projects that um, bring our collective voices together that are currently supported by Movement Strategy. Um, one of those that you'll be hearing a lot about uh, pretty soon is Let's Connect. Uh, I noticed Nicole is not in the room, but Let's Connect was um, sort of grew from the work that Wikimedia Deutschland started with Wikimedia UK, um, some um, and, and then parts of the Africa community and parts of um, Brazil um, as well. But Let's Connect is this big project currently that helps us find um, the shared platform for exchanging skills, knowledge, resources. Like we mentioned earlier, there are so many skills. I've had the privilege of meeting architects within our movement. I've had the privilege of meeting academics, professors. Uh, if I took a poll around the room, I'm pretty sure a lot of PhD hands would go up. Uh, well, there's one. There you go. Uh, two hands already. Um, and, and I've had the privilege of also meeting engineers um, and people who talk data and numbers, and I'm stunned, and I give them this look like, oh, in English. <laughs> but that's just the technical skills and the expertise. Now imagine that we have that shared space where you have access to that, and they're not in another world. They're just in a platform that you have easy access to. That's sort of some of the work that Let's Connect is doing, uh, that um, Capacity Exchange is putting together, so look out for Capacity Exchange. But without much ado, I would like to introduce the first person who will share a little about their project. That's Afi, who is in the room. He shared with us in the small group earlier on, but Afi is coming up. Afi, please come up and share a little about your movement strategy project. Hello, everyone. Hello, I'm Afi, and I'm from India. And first of all, before I begin to talk about DCW's leadership development and skills infrastructure plan, I'd like to thank Vivian, because I'm a backbencher. I had no submission, nothing, and this was all of a sudden. And we made this plan to discuss DCW's strategy a leadership development and skills infrastructure plan and what it, it wants to do and how it could contribute to the global leadership development within the Wikimedia movement and outside it in the general free knowledge movement. Next slide, please. I will do this. I'm not sure. Okay. So uh, what does the urban community Wikimedia comprise of? It is a group of volunteers from all around the world. And in this image, you could look at some uh, faces that belong to India, so several parts of India to Bangladesh, who contribute on a number of projects, number of initiatives, whether those are related to content, to photography, to Wikimedia comments, and to several others. Uh, the Human Community Wikimedia was established on 31st of July 2021. We have got two successful years. And it was recognized by the Affiliations Committee on 16 January 2022. And our focuses include the global Muslim academia, scholarship, history, culture, heritage. And we want it to be made available freely so that people all over the world get free access to it. And we want something that has generally not been considered. We want to move out, the, out of the Wikimedia ecosystem. This is not the only place. Everybody who does not have access to Wikimedia platforms, they should have access to free knowledge. And that is uh, one of the focuses of the DCW. 
these are some of the people who are connected or who are associated with the DCW as advisors, as contributors, as researchers, and uh, they meet up, you know, generally online, offline through conversation hours, and make up the best that the DCW uh, could give to the movement. We have a lot of projects, but 15 or 10 minutes is a pretty much low time that we could speak on those. So we are just a few uh, projects that we have mentioned here. This is Heritage Lens that aims at having the heritage related to Muslims all around the globe made freely available on Wikimedia projects so that people get to know about that. This was recently uh, initiated and its first iteration was held from 23rd July to 25th. And each iteration has a training session as well. And this one had three training sessions and it was quite successful. And part of this, uh, something that is not mentioned there, we got a collaborative project with a historical institution that was established in 1866. We have had one good project, that's Wikipedia 101. I could see Kiener here. Uh, this was his idea, and we made this through the Let's Connect. There was some other participant, and we made around 10 videos in Turkish. DCW was involved as an advisor in this project, and we hope this has been implemented in Turkey. And if it goes well, we would make sort of it in Urdu, Hindi, and Bangla as well, so that people know how to navigate to the Wikipedia as a beginner, and then we would be having some sort of uh, advanced educational sets as well. Uh, DCW Conversation OR, it's a global open conversation that takes place once in a month, and each time you have a different host, each time you have a different speaker that is expert on a different, typically different subject, uh, with no relation to other one, but time clash, and we have the speaker in other part of the world, there's night, so a lot of people cannot make to uh, get into it. We have had some speakers from outside of the movement, from inside of the movement, but the first uh, conversation, or it was in September 2022, however, it was standardized as a part of our own strategic recommendations that are not those from the Wikimedia Foundation or the Wikimedia Movement. We have had Dr. Ashraf Dokrat from University of Johannesburg. We have had Sam Walton from Foundation. We have had Nicole Schreiter, who has had research on Wikimedia Movement uh, meetups. And the next one is on 24 August. And now the basic the uh, thing of this is why MSIG, MSIG grant for the DCW. We have had the need of institutional partnerships to grow beyond what we are, are at. And the need for leadership and training programs so that we develop further, we sustain ourselves. And because we need new trainers, there's not just one person or two people. We need trainers, we need leaders beyond just two to three people. And that's why MSIG grant. Leadership Development and Skilled Infrastructure Plan of the DCW, it aims uh, to further DCW's initiatives for its longer run sustainment and institutional partnerships. It wants to further movement strategy recommendations that are, you know, up and around the leadership development and skills infrastructure. And we have a prism, and that's the prism of institutional building and collaboration and something that we have in the India to uh, prepare based on all of this is a choice-based credit system courses for universities that we can, you know, queue and get students trained into this uh, stuff. And this is supported by movement strategy, strategy grant of this much amount that's showing up on the screen. The project outline is there. We want to justify the need so that people who come after us to apply for such a grant, they don't need to justify why we want this. We want to justify it for everybody that why do they need such a grant? 
of such a project. We are adapting earlier stuff on LESI, Leadership Development Skills Infrastructure, that has been produced, prepared by other entities in the Wikimedia movement. And then we are uh, elaborating with the prism of knowledge sharing and institutional building. And we are, we are preparing certain courses as a part of this project that is in you know, compatibility and in compliance with the Indian University's choice based credit system. Where a student can opt any subject, but they have to study and they have to give uh, exam of it. They have to have sort of whatever it is oral or practical. They have to give it for necessar necessarily. And we want to offer leadership programs and courses to Wikimedia organizers as well, because a lot of people are passionate. They do not have that much skills that they need to organize within the Wikimedia movement. And we have something very new. We have heard of mission align institutions navigating there. That's pretty much easier work. But we want something to navigate into non-mission aligned institutions. And for that, we are preparing a roadmap and a guideline as a part of this program. And I lead this program at the DCW, and we have a researcher on this as well, Afaf Nasir, and she's a research scholar. She's working on that. Some major successes are that we have got some nice academicians to support us. We have a good volunteer support. We have had some seminars as well, and we have concluded the pre preliminary research, and we are working beyond. Some challenges, the challenge, biggest challenge is that we have to navigate into non-mission aligned institutions. This, you know, lack of awareness in our targeted audience, that is mostly the students into the alternate institutions that are not part of the mainstream education making of academic and creative courses which do not have a foundational line is of course a big challenge and making a roadmap to approach non-mission aligned institutions are a big challenge that we are facing right now and that's it sorry that's it we hope we can help the movement thanks a lot thanks for listening Please put your hands together for Afi. Um, this was Afi's own experimental project um, on movement strategy and well done. He's been engaging his community um, and really bringing, I think, a, a few more people on board. I got a few more questions um, from members of the community about movement strategy, which was interesting uh, to see the interest. Um, so I'd like to invite a friend from the Paiwan user group as well. Also an experimental project on movement strategy. Hey, Hello everyone, my name is Gang Wei Yu. Also, Yiyumu is my username. So if you're interested in our projects, you can always contact me on uh, Wikimedia meta pages, okay? So, today I'm going to talk about uh, Taiwan project in Taiwan. Um, we are a user group from Taiwan. And uh, if you can raise your hand with me, I will show you how Taiwan looks like, like uh, an island in Asia like this, okay? And how to... Ah, okay. So, First of all, I'll do a brief introduction about myself, okay? Um, my home, I from, I'm from Chao Dun, Chao Dun Town and Lam Dao City in Taiwan, oh, Taiwan, okay? And uh, me, personally, I'm not Paiwan people. And Paiwan is one of the indigenous communities in Taiwan. And if you know, like Taiwan is a small island with uh, 23 million people, but most people there in Taiwan, they speak Mandarin Chinese. And Taiwan people located in, again, you can raise your hand with me, the Taiwan, the south part of Taiwan, Taiwan communities, 
okay, south part. And Taiwan people, we have only about like 90,000. So compared to the total 23 million, we are very small communities in Taiwan. And uh, also in daily life, in school, not many Taiwan language can be heard. So uh, with Wikimedia movement, we believe or we think we can have more development on our languages. And uh, so I start to I started to learn Taiwan language. Uh, I'm not Taiwan people, but I started to learn Taiwan language from about 2018. And so till now it's about five years. <clears throat> and uh, so with this study background, I have the opportunity to work in a university called National Zhengzhi University in Taipak. Taipak, uh, again, Taipak in the north part of Taiwan. Yes, north part of Taiwan, Taipak. And I work there and I, so during my work in uh, the Zhengzhi University, I have the chance to uh, get to know wiki project. So I know different wiki projects. There's, there's not only Wikipedia. We also have Wikidata and uh, I know meta pages. So that's why I have the opportunity to get to get connected with the international communities. <clears throat> so at that time, I tried to help uh, with different indigenous communities in Taiwan, uh, including Dayat, Amis, and Taiwan, and so on. Okay, so, and later from uh, 2021, uh, we start to build, build up our user group. Before we just like sometime we have some online meetup and discuss how we write our Wikipedia projects. But later we decided to build up a user group. So with the user group, we can do more activities and try to recruit more people to contribute to our wiki project. Okay, so later because of my uh, wiki works, I have the opportunity to join the Wikimedia Language Diversity Hub. I'm not sure, is there any member from the Diversity Hub here? No, okay. <laughs> okay, so now I'm also a co-founder of a Hoping You Wikimedians user group who which is uh, aims to uh, contribute on uh, Taiwan way, uh, Taiwanese Hokkien uh, with the new user group I am working on. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, what we are doing as Taiwan Wikimedia user group, uh, basically first we work more, mostly on uh, Wikipedia and our Wikipedia is called Wikipedia no Binaiwanan. It's a Taiwan Wikipedia. And we write some articles like most uh, Wikipedia projects. But uh, while we are writing, we found we have a one big problem. Uh, that's uh, most, uh, I think some small language community has this kind of problem because when we write uh, Wikipedia, we need to have some references, right? And we only have Mandarin and English or maybe Japanese references. So we are kind of like read or like kind of like translate. We only do like translate or we read and write in Taiwan. We don't have the first hand Taiwan references. So we are try. so we later we try to think about, ah, maybe they are more like traditional local elders. They know local mythologies or local stories, or they know how the mountains were or come from, or like the mountain, the stories of the mountain, the stories of the rivers. So uh, we think the community thinks this is also important, but we don't have much uh, documents. We don't have much references for for us to to take the as the citation. So later we think that maybe we can have some audio files. We record the authors. They speak. We invite the speakers and then we record. So this is the what we think we can do, and uh, so we we recorded some audio files. So we upload to Wikimedia Commons, so which can be shared with some other people. And uh, also with the audio files, we transcribe it and we type it down. 
and put on wiki source. This is what we are trying to do. So with the Mandarin Chinese or English references and also we can have the the wiki source wiki source pages that we can take as our reference when we try to contribute on uh, Wikipedia or even visionary. Okay. So and also we uh, try to uh, uh, promote uh, wiki data to our communities. But uh, if you know, like most of our members in Taiwan community are like very aged. So actually sometimes they are not very used to use computers or online things. So it will be a little bit complicated for them to to, to get used to wiki data. But this is also we are trying to do because with uh, this data uh, can be reused again and again like from some like data engineering this is we don't know much about this but i think we can build the the Python lexemes the vocabularies can be can be resourced in the wiki data and also we are also we also try to uh, develop our visionary Python visionary in incubator so this is basically what we are doing and uh as as we know, we are very lucky to to get supported from uh, the the Wikimedia Foundation. So we have we have the this oral citation in Python language project, and with this project, we are doing uh, some promotional events. And now the Taiwan government uh, start to uh, have some more focus on supporting the development of uh, small languages. So we have more events every year now. So if there are some events, we can go there and promote to make more people, uh, maybe they are interested in Taiwan Wikimedia projects or to try to encourage uh, different uh, communities or different groups. And also, and the second part, we try to do some community survey uh, because when we are recruiting members, you don't, maybe some are not interested in in contributing wiki projects we need to know why for example um, they don't like to contribute in this way to to edit but there is also another way you can contribute to wiki projects for example you can speak then that uh, that we recorded so this survey we will know how to uh, efficiently promote uh, Taiwan wiki projects later okay so Later, we will also like to, as I, as I say before, uh, to get more references and to have more workshops to introduce uh, wiki projects to the communities. Okay, so the challenge is, as I say, like we don't have much, we don't have many young contributors. Most contributors are very aged, so they are not very used to uh, computers. And so, also the diversity of communities. You know, Taiwan people with only not only one community. We have many communities, but we all call it Taiwan. So we have the diversity of community. That can be the challenges. And also, there's also another question like when we write Wikipedia. Another question is who read. So we need to promote to maybe to school to let teachers teach or some use some our Wikipedia in class. So this is the challenge. So later we will try to have some conference to invite more people who cared about Taiwan language to have a discuss about this and the usage of the collective references and cooperation with other organizations in Taiwan. We have some promotional organization or maybe educational bureau in Taiwan and so on and reach out as I say reach out to Taiwan classes to make a teacher they will be willing to use Taiwan Wikipedia or Taiwan Wiki projects in class okay so yeah that's it maji maji masalu it means thank you in Taiwan okay maji maji masalu thank you very much masaru yes thank you um so this, this project was, um, if, if you've tracked movement strategy, um, one of the key principles of the movement strategy is knowledge equity. 
and that means um, in, in many different ways or among many other things, ensuring that our that local language communities, small language communities are able to achieve their, their goals, their aims and objectives like um, what Ian was doing for the Paiwan community. Thank you so much for taking the lead on this and for supporting your community. Well done, please put your hands together for him again. All right, uh, another person who's been supporting a different type of community in very interesting ways um, is Tony. Um, right, from Shared Knowledge. <laughs> Please welcome Tony. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Tony Ristovsky. I live in Skopje in Macedonia. Uh, I'm uh, from Shared Knowledge. That is a user group which uh, works in Macedonia like a uh, very long time, uh, probably on the side, yeah. Uh, so uh, we have like uh, from 2014, we started working uh, with Wikipedia and Wikimedia projects. Uh, we have many things to, to work, uh, uh, like uh, we cover like partnerships, uh, uh, education and uh, like Guam segment, uh, but we are not speaking now for, uh, for uh, the user group. Uh, it is a, a very active and big uh, group. Uh, we work uh, com like more, we can say like a chapter, but we are not still recognized. Uh, about our project, which uh, is more uh, interesting, uh, we uh, pick up like uh, we mostly work, uh, our work is on a Macedonian language because it is official language, but uh, uh, thanks to the movement strategy grant, we uh, uh, we make a grant uh, uh, supporting the two communities, two minority uh, groups, uh, our Romanian and Romani community, along with the uh, second uh, group, uh, which is a user of sign language. Uh, that that was particularly interesting for us because we want to engage those people who have like a loss hearing or problems. Uh, like uh, with communication uh, and uh, that's why we included Macedonian Sign Language. Uh, about this project, uh, we started like last year in June and uh, like uh, Pyron community, we also have like a research phase when we focused on what, uh, what those participants wants to, uh, to be included in the, in the, in the process and what we can help during the process. And we sent like a, a complete server, thanks to the uh, mo uh, partners from these uh, communities, our Romanian and Romani communities, along with the Macedonian Sign Language community. Uh, we have uh, an, uh, NGOs, which we worked. So we are not uh, doing like uh, the job like uh, we like from itself and like uh, basically uh, by ourselves, but uh, we, thanks to the partners, external partners that we have, uh, we, uh, we made a uh, successful with the research phase and we have like, uh, uh, I think uh, in the service more than 200 uh, participants from those groups. And uh, when you say that uh, these languages is only like uh, uh, nine or 8,000 speakers in the country, it is a lot of people that uh, contributed to the server. Uh, after that, we, we have implementation phase. Uh, it is uh, like uh, every uh, Wikipedia project, uh, we have like uh, workshops uh, and uh, about uh, Romanian and Romani communities along with the editing contest and uh, challenges that uh, we, uh, about creation of the articles and uh, you know, on, on, on their own languages and uh, about uh, Macedonian Sign Language community, uh, which uh, may, uh, like some of you, uh, may have a question how they contribute to, to our projects. Uh, we filmed uh, videos uh, with them. Uh, uh, it was a very interesting uh, uh, like, uh, concept with them. Like, uh, we, uh, we take a lot of effort to, 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 to have included in the process, like uh, they, uh, they uh, pick a theme uh, to like article from the Wikipedia and they uh, like uh, have an introduction uh, like a section or uh, mostly introduction sections 
uh, about uh, these people, uh, and uh, they have like uh, uh, on on the Macedonian sign language they filmed uh, uh, videos about uh, that. What challenges that uh, we faced during the uh, working on this project? It was uh, that uh, uh, underrepresented communities. Uh, like uh, we already heard, does not have uh, digital or like uh, materials in written materials. Uh, so uh, that is a problem that is uh, like uh, very uh, hard to to uh, resolve. And uh, it is uh, that uh, also uh, that is first problem. But the second problem that is also uh, a problem that we faced during the implementation phase is that not all of the participants who want to uh, like uh, to, to re write uh, on uh, the languages uh, know the language in uh, like um, a complete way like uh, native speakers uh, th they are native uh, speakers but uh, because of these lang two languages are not uh, taught in the schools uh, they don't have like a proper standard form of uh, writing so uh, when we have uh, workshops uh, they used like uh, different words about same word, like uh, different pronunciations and different uh, language uh, uh, style, and uh, that was the problem that uh, uh, we faced. Uh, also, uh, it uh, it was uh, a problem uh, 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 that uh, we faced uh, in the uh, like uh, uh, experimenting with the new methods of community engagement. Uh, the problem was that uh, not uh, all of the, especially in the Romani communities, does not have like a, com a computer literacy. Uh, so uh, that's uh, that's the uh, was the another problem that they like in the first place <laughs> we need to like teach them like how to to use so, like uh, like even uh, a standard uh, use of the uh, with the computer equipment and then to like to write on uh, Wikipedia about evaluation and i have to say now that on saturday during the conference we will say like a complete presentation about uh, lessons learned about the project uh it, it is like 11 35 uh, uh so you can find it in the program uh we can speak a lot of more like 10 le lessons learned like in a much uh, broader way uh from this project uh, so, uh, but uh, this is uh, like some of the numbers that we achieved during uh, the, the uh, implementation of the um, uh, like implementation of the project. But nevertheless, uh, the problem, the like the plans, and uh, the much uh, uh, interesting part is that is uh, for our Romanian community. I will speak now for them because for this community it is a success. Uh, we have editing contests with them and workshops. And after that, uh, uh, this community, it was included in the CE Spring. CE Spring is a regional editing contest that we have in the Central and Eastern Europe. And it, is, it was included like a new community this year. And one of the organizer of the, this community uh, from an Armenian community uh, will attend the CE meeting in Georgia next month. So uh, we finally like wake up this community, and even for the like small language, they have like now like participation in the regional contest. They have like uh, uh, regional attendance at the meetings. So this is like uh, I can say it is a success uh, for a Romani-speaking community. <laughs> on the other side, it is we don't have a success story like. Uh, they don't participate in our contest, so it is like uh, uh, it is like also a message to you. Uh, no, no project it is meant to be success. Like uh, not every project meant to be success. It is a journey. You will you will learn during the process. Uh, like uh, you, we have a problem. Like you can see with one of them, it is a successful story but for uh, another uh, project uh, like uh, another community is a completely different so it is you you don't be afraid of this like uh, you just uh, work with the project and uh, just share the results after that with the team especially with the team from foundation 
uh, about Macedonian Sign Language community. Uh, we have uh, actually, <laughs> uh, it is a, a proposed uh, grant. Uh, we want to continue uh, filming uh, different, uh, uh, different videos about scientific terminology in the uh, next year or this year, uh, depending on the uh, grant process. Okay, the, if you have any questions, you can find me uh, during the conference or at, uh, in Saturday uh, at our like, uh, uh, main uh, presentation about this project. Thank you very much, Tony. Um, and thank you for reminding us that sometimes you learn from what doesn't work, <laughs> uh, which is the flexibility also that comes with movement strategy grants because they are experimental. And it's about learning, learning what works and learning what doesn't work. Thank you so much, Tony, for sharing. Just put your hands together for him once again. Um, our last presentation is pre-recorded. Um, is it ready? Okay. Yes, this is uh, by Arceus Cloud from Indonesia. This time, uh, the first one is about uh, background of Open Charter Conversation that I did. And the second one is community engagement. And the next one is challenge best during the conversation. So hope you could enjoy this slide. Okay. okay, the first slide is about uh, background why I do the conversation last year, especially about movement charter. And we know that in our communities, some of communities doesn't engage with movement charter. And that's why when uh, the program of movement charter ambassador comes in and I got the information, I'm to join it to ensure that communities in Indonesia engage with process of movement charter. Okay, and the next one is about community conversation and translation. So what I did in this movement charter ambassador program, uh, in the first one is I held three conversation in three Wikimedia communities in Indonesia. Uh, the first one is Wikimedia Manokwari that I held in 3rd December 2022 and the next day is Wikimedia Banjar in Sunday for uh, December 2022 and the last conversation is in Wikimedia Denpasar on Sunday 18 December 2022 so in this case I provide them space for them to giving a feedback about Tremble value and principle, roles and responsibility. I also uh, introducing them to movement charter, what is movement charter, what is the purpose of movement charter, and how the process of uh, movement charter is affect to them. Uh, Besides that, I also translation, doing the translation in Banjar language, I translate documents such as preamble, uh, value and principle, and roles and responsibility to Banjar language. Okay, the next one is challenge based during the conversation of movement charter that I had in three small communities in Indonesia. The first one is about like a participation community members during the conversation. In three conversations that are held, some of members uh, tend to be passive during this conversation. That's why feedbacks given, most of them obtained by moderator or community coordinator. And the second challenge that I faced during the conversation is lack of ability to explain movement charter based on community's context. Uh, we know that uh, we have different background in the communities and they seem unfamiliar with movement charter even though there have been explanation before we need to uh, explain movement charter in their context for example when most of the students 
when most of members of community are students in university, uh, we should uh, define a movement charter matching with their document in university. Okay, this is the last presentation of me. It's about uh, feedback obtained during the movement charter conversation that I held. Uh, there is four of points that I'm going that I'm going to explain it or uh, that I'm going to sharing. Uh, so this is the four points about outlining or the needs of our communities during the conference session. The first one is creating glossarium, language adjustment, comparison terms, and roles and responsibility. So, uh, creating glossarium, the communities asked Mupen Charter needs a glossarium because uh, it is important to make people who don't have background knowledge about Wikimedia or about Movement Charter understand, understand and could read. And the next one is language adjustment. So, uh, for language adjustment, they ask uh, movement charter needs to be simplified their language as simple as possible. So uh, they ask in the one paragraph not too many information, yet not to a few information. They also ask uh, for reconsider some of the value and principle such as uh, subsidiarity. Uh, we need to change it into uh, familiar words and the next one is about comparison terms so our communities is not familiar with movement charter and they do not engage before with the process of mover charter due to uh, language barrier and any other reason that's why they ask explaining it with other terms that familiar with them and the last one is about roles and responsibility so they ask about uh, consequence about roles and responsibility uh, there's we know that in roles and roles and responsibility would be explaining about voluntary communities and movement bodies and any other aspect so they ask for adding consequence if this movement bodies or in this volunteer or in this community did not do what it should okay uh, terima kasih or thank you for listening this presentation my presentation i apologize i could not attend this presentation in person because i have another agenda but uh, see you in singapore bye bye Yes, we do hope to see him again um, sometime soon at another one of our conferences. Thank you. Um, so thank you to everyone who shared. Uh, the floor is open now. If you have any questions for um, Yumu, uh, I see Tony has stepped out as well, or for Afi about their projects, their movement strategy projects, or if you have a question about your project in the way that you're thinking about it, and you'd like to discuss, the floor is open right now. Um, I think we have a microphone. Yeah, that Vivian will take around. If you can show with your hand, if you have a question. Anyone? Peter. Yeah, question for Afi. Uh, we have so many user groups that cover a region and some that cover a language, but yours is is one that is substantive. It's about an area, a topic, right? A point of view in any language. And I, I wonder how much you copy from wiki projects or other user groups, or you had to break new ground. Oh, right. Well, thank you, Peter, for the question. I feel that we have not copied from any of other wiki projects, whether those are language-based or some of other thematic projects. 
the DCW is a pretty new something that I began from scratch. And this is perhaps why it took uh, well four to six months for recognition from FCOM. And that's pretty new. But we want to give to others in terms of leadership and skills infrastructure so that they could see how they could use these skills in their own regional context because we focus on a theme that might make some sort of comparison. Yeah, that's a theme, you have a language. Let's try. Thank you. Great, thank you, Afi. Anyone else? Hands. <laughs> Actually, I do have a question for you, because um, your project was largely experimental. Um, and before you started the project, you had some big hopes and dreams about what you wanted to achieve. What was your biggest learning? Um, what surprised you the most after kicking off the project? Um, yeah. And what, what would you say for you was just the, the one experience that was different from what you expected? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned before, like, um, you know, Pi One is not a single community. It's Pi One communities because in the old time, Pi One is not called Pi One. It's many, many communities. And now we know it's Pi One. So the biggest learning from now is uh, we really know that the diversity of the community I mean, sometimes um, you want to introduce one tradition or one place. You cannot only uh, can only know, you cannot only take one saying from one community because there might be another community, another Taiwan community that have different opinions. So that's why we need to visit more communities and collect more uh, opinions or collect more, we say, mythologies or the, the old sayings. So this is the most uh, we have learned from this project. We need to we still need to visit more communities because, um, as I say, Taiwan is small. Taiwan communities are small, but really we have the diversity. So yeah, even sometimes the language the use of the vocabulary can be different from different Taiwan communities. Yeah, so yeah, thank you. It's my answer. Okay. Okay. So we need to engage with more communities. Fair enough. Um, anyone else have a question? Okay. You're cool. So I have a question to um, not just the presenters, but anyone who's ever um, applied for the MSIG grant. Um, were there any like difficulties or challenges um, in in when you like the when you apply in trying to apply for the grant, or? Um, are there like any messages you can share to people who's never like they're interested in the grant, but they don't know how to get started? Any like a advice or a recommendation that you can um, share with them? Um, that would be great <laughs> because I work with um, communities, which is, is still they there are not many um, applicants for grants. So what would what can you say to encourage them? <laughs> Uh, thank you, Junko. This is an interesting question, and I feel this should be answered. Uh, when I applied for the Leadership Development and Skilled Infrastructure Plan, it took around two and more months to, to be approved, because all of a sudden uh, the movement strategy and governance team was dissolved, and I was hopeless for over one and more months that, oh, wow, what's going to happen now? It would be approved or not, or how do we get into this? There was uncertainty and I had no answer until I got to know that it was approved in June. I had to move the timeline to next month. So that was a big challenge, but I have a message for others as well. 
if you plan to apply for a MSIG grant, make sure you have an action plan and you have a vision. If these two things are missing, I'm not sure if it's going to be approved or not, but you can make the best of it, the vision makes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Afi. Um, any other question or any ideas to pitch? <laughs> Do you have any thoughts in your mind you want to share? I think this is also a good time to do so. Anyone? Yeah, I, re I really like the way that Afi puts it. You have to have a plan and a vision. <laughs> a plan is always, um, always super important. Um, there are a few people here that I know have a few projects running, uh, but I do have a question about what kinds of resources do you typically look for? Um, that you have challenges accessing currently on your project, whether you see that project within a movement strategy recommendation currently or not. But what kind of resources beyond financial? Uh, of course, if it's financial, it would be great to hear what the constraints are, but what kind of resources do you typically look for um, in implementing your projects? Or if you, when thinking about projects that are ongoing or things that you want to, to take on. Or, or even those out-of-the-box ideas that sometimes is like, oh, but this will never happen. What is that barrier? So I'd love to hear that, if anyone has that to share with us. Yeah. Yeah, so I can only tell from my experience that the most important resource you need to uh, run a project is the people, that you need a team, that you need um, a community, and uh, it's more often more important than having the money, because with the people come the ideas and sometimes the resources, the material resources as well, so this is the most important thing. Yeah, that's my contribution to this question. <laughs> a follow-up to that, why, why is that, I've heard, we've heard, heard that often. Why is, why is that such a challenge? Like, what is the gap for us? Um, earlier on, we talked about capac CapEx uh, that's coming up, the capacity exchange platform. Would you see that potentially as a resource that could help solve that problem? Or is there a bigger, um, like, resourcing need? Is it about the people not being interested? Or is this about knowledge, people just knowing that there's a project that they can um, support? Um, in terms of resourcing, what is the challenge? Or is it about just having staff? Yeah, I think I can follow up um, in this uh, matter with uh, what Alfie said. said um, you need a vision. Uh, you need a vision that, um, you know, um, yeah, in, um, ignites other people. If you have a good vision, then people say, hey, it's a good idea. I really want to support this. Yeah, this is the most important thing, I guess. And no, then no matter what platform, yeah, it's about your message you have about the vision and then you can find mm. willing people everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So you have to be a visionary. Um. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. I, um, I've been just asking uh, who I am. <laughs> Yes, I can do that. Um, I'm from Wikimedia Deutschland and um, I'm a communications manager there. And this is my first Wikimania and I'm yeah very curious about all your stories, <laughs> which I will gather. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, anyone else have some thoughts to share about resourcing, where the challenges are or any answers you might have? Uh, hi everyone, I'm Belinda from Wikimedia Australia. Um, I've been involved in working with the ECAP hub, which is a region we're trying um, to set up like a collaborative group. So East, Southeast Asia and the Pacific. And I think one of the challenges for us has been, we have a vision, we have uh, people, but I think for us, we feel we have to have all the answers before we put in our plan. And yeah, I like the way that Yope has been working with us saying, you don't have to have all the answers. You can find out the answers as you're going along. As long as you have the plan and the vision, 
and maybe some people who have some answers will be in your group but yeah a lot of those questions that that's what we're doing the process will lead us hopefully to some of those answers but that's definitely been a challenge for us we think we have to have everything and know everything before we can start our hub and we don't have to have all the answers straight away thank you belinda who else feels that way that you have to have all the answers before you begin the project <laughs> i think it's by default that we feel that way um but just curious if, if if we see ways to surmount that, and what is the, if we think of it in terms of resource, what is the resource we need that would give us the confidence to go into a project, even with questions that are unanswered? Is it having the right technology? Is it having the right group of people? Is it the vision? Um, what might it be? Or is it just knowing that the flexibility is there? I don't know, it's a tough one. <laughs> Maybe it's just that we're all perfectionists. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's what, what is it they say about perfect? It's a, it's a blessing and a curse. Um, you want to have all the right answers. Uh, but just to, just to add to what Belinda was saying, the good thing um, about resourcing movement strategy is that in, in implementing strategy, we don't always have all of the answers. Sometimes the process we're going through is to get the answers that we need. We need to be able to bake in a combination of the vision, the plan, and the open questions. That's why having um, a learning framework or a learning pathway on your project is often important, because it's through that learning pathway we can say, well, we're going into this, we want to learn. Um, as we're implementing the project, uh, for instance, with Tony, he's not here, he would share. But in implementing their project, uh, initially the sign language community was, was not the big focus. It was how do they bring in the sign, how do they bring the sign language community to work with um, other editors more closely. And as the project was being implemented, they realized that there's actually a very vibrant sign language community. Um, even the people who reviewed the proposal previously said, oh, but there's no sign language community. Why are they focusing on that? But they've learned along the way that actually there's a vibrant sign language community that could be better served if they just put in more effort and focused on them a little more. And so that's, um, he talked about the next proposal, that's the focus currently of the proposal moving forward. Um, which is why I'm asking, does flexibility help us go in with a bit of uncertainty so that we're able to achieve um, some of our projects? Also just saying that movement strategy kind of helps us to, and uh, is what enables us to try and um, take those steps. All right. I think this adds on to comments I heard from others. It's, it's uh, a focused thought. I guess I've been involved in six times applying to the Wikimedia Foundation for grant funding and often got it, but not always. And I, one thing that was distinctive about applying for the movement strategy one was that from the very beginning, we were talking with you about what we were trying to achieve, what is the idea. Other people are using the word vision, but the purpose of the thing, and we were not immediately channeled to some a depressing subject like I, which software you have to log into and how many budget categories there should be and the uh, exact time frame of beginning and ending or the uh, or the details of the finances. So I thought that went nicely. It kept our spirits up the whole way through. Thank okay. you. Thank you too. Thank you too. Oh, and Afi, um, just to uh, respond to your challenge earlier on, really apologies for that. But also just to um, also say that the movement strategy team was not dissolved, but rather the foundation, if you take a look at the annual plan, has sort of integrated the movement strategy focus, um, mainstreamed it across different departments. So it was a bit of a tough transition from that, from the team that you saw into this um, more integrated process and unfortunately, um, uh, 
you became casualty <laughs> in, in that process. But the process is, it is streamlined now. Um, and hopefully fewer hiccups than we had previously. All right. Um, you will find a lot of the movements, many of the movement strategy team people in the room. Vivian is on the movement strategy team. She's with uh, communications now. Yunko as well. Mahutan was here earlier. Ah, uh, there he is. And I'm uh, in uh, on the community resources team. So we just moved and made sure that, um, you know, the foundation just made a more strategic decision about how, um, how much more integral the movement strategy process is to, to our movement and the work that we do. Hey, um, any other questions, thoughts about resourcing our projects, resourcing our work? Um, I'll ask now a question. Do you know how to get the resources that you need to implement your projects? We broke into groups earlier on and we discussed the projects that we're working on. Um, some of these projects we're working on as volunteers and some of these projects we can really grow into big ideas. What are the resources that we need for that? And are there any resources that you need? Um, would like to hear from you. Oh, that's great. I'll ask the foundation to just close down all grants. <laughs> <laughs> if we have no resource needs. Um. Anyone? Don't be shy. Okay. Um, if you don't want to talk about it right now, that's perfectly fine. Um, I'm here throughout Yoprang Pam. Feel free to pull me in a corner and talk about your project. Um, it's what I'm here for all the way up to Sunday. So if you do have a project, you have an idea that's related to movement strategy, or even just generally you're not sure how your project connects to movement strategy, would be, I would be happy to um, have a conversation with you um, and see how it is connected. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe even help flesh out the idea a bit, which is also something we try to do on the Movement Strategy Grants. All right. So we have 10 minutes to go. Um, I think after this we go in for the lunch break. Is it the lunch break? Okay. So after this we go in for the lunch break. Um, we could give you back the next 10 minutes, but the floor is open. Do you have any questions? No questions. So you get 10 minutes back. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, so from the group where I was in uh, at the first or second session, uh, I remember um, some people from Wikimedia Deutschland, I don't know if they're still here, that they were, um, are they, uh, hi, <laughs> uh, but maybe not the people that were at my work group, but they were saying that at, the, um, at, the, uh, at Wikimedia Deutschland they had a group that was, for example, giving feedback on the moving charter draft. Yeah. So I was wondering, because I imagine having a, a, a chapter having uh, people on their staff being able to dedicate their time to review the draft on paid time, uh, that kind of might bias things a little bit at the end. <laughs> so my, my question is, do you know if there are other affiliates that are doing that as well? That their staff is being able to, to, to put their time and their effort to do that? Okay, um, personally can't say for sure, but there are many other affiliates who, as a part of their annual plans, do have a movement strategy focus at some level. Um, in some cases, there are people who are able to dedicate that time, but um, I mean, the work that Wikimedia Deutschland has been doing, she would speak better to it um, in supporting um, and in, you know, helping advance movement strategy has been going on for quite a bit. Um, so there's a lot of institutional knowledge in that process um, that comes to bear um, in, in the feedback that they give. But as far as I know, there are uh, just about every affiliate has some movement strategy focus um, in their annual grant, uh, in their annual plan, I beg your pardon. And within that 
potentially there might be people who who do have that focus but it's not only affiliates who do contribute to um the movement charter have you contributed have you given your feedback no not personally <laughs> well you... i still have to read it <laughs> okay you might want to take a look at roles and responsibilities because there's a bit of a tech focus and data focus um, in that and, you know, what, what are the roles and responsibilities that we have um, in relation to that? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And we do have sessions um, with the Movement Charter Drafting Committee and t today and also mm -hmm. tomorrow. So if anyone is interested, please also share your first hand. Uh, feedback with them. And as you can see, as everyone can see today, uh, we have Akuskalau and earlier from the Igbo community, those are the Movement Charter Ambassadors. So they're uh, volunteers who apply for a smaller grant and really share the experience um, from their community on the charter. So uh, this is also something that's available that the current consultation is still ongoing. And so to share feedbacks as well. Yep. Yeah. Yes. All right. Also just to say that, that there's one initiative um, uh, of the movement strategy that um, ties to recommendation number four, equity and decision making, regional and thematic hubs. Um, and within the regional and thematic hubs, there are some answers or potentially some questions about resourcing as well that could be answered in that space. So we'll be talking about regional and thematic hubs for those who've been engaged uh, with the movement strategy conversations, the hubs are a bit of a hot topic at the moment. Um, so please do feel free to join the hubs conversations coming up later. Um, right. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much. Please put your hands together for yourselves. So, um, do come back again to 325 if you want to join the discussion on Hub in the afternoon. We will be hearing from different hubbers from all different regions and all different groups.